if you can use the amateur satellite servers, then to select your band or bands, they'd be quite hardware dependent. And uh, if your project is a purely scientific, I would ask you very, uh, <laughs> as nice as I can, if you can see if you can uh, implement uh, something that gives a greater benefit to the average radio amateur who is sitting there listening. Uh, some of the projects I have seen have um, been able to leave the satellite after its useful time with the transponder that the amateurs can use. Um, remember, there are a lot of amateurs who follow what goes on in, in the amateur bands and would like to follow this. And um, uh, if you are a scientific project and using the, the amateur bands, it would be very nice if you could try to give, give some back, actually. Then it is important to provide your administration with the necessary information for the API. I'm not going to go in again to uh, orbit uh, or um, launch vehicles, but um, we've, we've discussed that. Then to fill the IAU frequency form, and then send the form by email. Um, since it's sent by email, we really want the form, but we don't want a lot of additional uh, material in uh, together with the form. We want references to URLs or, or places where we can go and get them, just to make sure that the form gets there. Uh, and if you haven't done by that time, when you, when you fill your form, then go back again, then you have all the information on paper, then go back again and make sure your administration has uh, started the, the procedure with, uh, with ITU. Pay attention if questions come back, because the satellite panel, um, if they have questions and they ask questions and they don't get any kind of response, then they will put your application aside. So pay attention if there are questions coming back. And you can follow your um, status on the URL given here to see um, when, when you get, but uh, you will also get a um, letter, a coordination letter when you have your, uh, your frequency coordinated. But if you're um, anxious to see, and if you don't see yourself up there on the list, then make sure there isn't an outstanding question that you haven't responded to. And remember, all the, all the registration with ITU, it's only the administration who can do registration with ITU. IAU can only coordinate frequencies in the allocations for um, the amateur satellite service. I think Attila wants me to go very fast. So um, I... Um, I have actually, um, what should I say? I, I would like to say that if you can build a satellite, you can also fill this form without a problem. <laughs> <coughs> and, and, and what is requested in, in our form is actually less than the API. So if you can do the API, you've already done the, the form. <laughs> I, be, I, be, I believe they are so similar that if you do them uh, together, do, you'll be fine. <laughs> Attila doesn't really um, um, agree with me. So the form is, is very simple. It's not so sophisticated as we will see tomorrow with the um, ITU forms. And um, what I wanted to um, mention here before um, I leave the control is on the um, telecommand. We uh, need information on the telecommand, you need to have the possibility to turn off the satellite immediately. So that is a requirement coming from the radio regulations when it comes to a telecommand uh, station. Space stations shall be fitted with devices to ensure immediate session of the radio emission by telecommand whenever such is required under provision of these regulations. Um, another thing, the telecommand can be encrypted. The telemetry in an amateur band cannot be encrypted. 
if you have a kind of um, um, format that is unknown, then it needs to be shown where we can find information, and the information needs to be public available. So if you're using some special kind of uh, syntax, then you need to, to show where this syntax is described. So this is also one of the requirements if you're using a, um, a band in the satellite service. Um, I will be outside together with some of the others, um, just beside that poster, and be happy to uh, discuss further and uh, go more in detail and uh, answer questions. And before you all sleep, fall asleep, then uh, I guess there's one more presentation waiting. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Olin, for that. Uh, well, yes, I will call for presenter of the, of the last presentation to be there. Uh, one of the things is that, well, this morning, during my speeches and presentations, at some stage, uh, I, I, I may have been misunderstood because I, 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 I had some suspicions about uh, the use of uh, the amateur satellite bands. Uh, and then, uh, right now, I think that uh, with that presentation, and with the insurance that uh, uh, the, 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 the amateur people there, uh, I'm sure that all amateur satellite band will be used according to the ITU uh, regulations and definitions. So thanks for these presentations. Uh, well, also, as I said, we, we, we had this morning an ITU show, and uh, we couldn't finish the day without having a few words about what's going on at ITU. Uh, during my presentation this morning, I mentioned, in fact, uh, what was going on uh, concerning the CubeSat and SmallSat at ITU, and I mentioned particularly uh, the resolution uh, 757 taken by WRC-12 about the regulatory aspects for nano and pico satellites. And there was also, in some of the ITU study group, some questions <coughs> concerning the characteristics and the spectrum requirements of those systems which are using uh, nano and pico satellites. And, to finish the day uh, clearly about uh, all of those issues and particularly uh, this resolution. And as I mentioned this morning, it's quite important because if anything needs to be done, and please uh, don't misread what I'm saying. I'm not saying that something needs to be done. But what I would say, if anything needs to be done, uh, it's true that it's the right time now uh, because there will be the conference uh, uh, WRC 15 in November, where if anything could, could, could be decided through a resolution, this could be done. There would be also discussion at the conference about the preliminary agenda uh, item for the next conference that will be uh, uh, WRC 19. It will be 19 now. And so if really there is a need to, to, to work more about uh, this for you uh, up to the next conference regarding those small sites, the decision will be taken by the conference. So I think it's a quite important moment at the ITU level, WRC preparation regarding those issues. And right now, I will invite, uh, in fact, um, Walter Janubels and Martin Buescher to say what, what, what is the status about these uh, ITU studies which are related to satellites. And I know that there's a big pressure on them because it's the last presentation of the day. Please, <laughs> you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Henri. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are cheating a little bit because you're all expecting just one final presentation, but actually we're putting two presentations in one. So I ask for your indulgence, but we'll make it quick and we'll make it enjoyable. Um, my name is Wouter Jan Ubbels. I'm from ISIS, Innovative Solutions in Space. We're a company specializing in small satellites, in launching, developing them, designing them, and we also sell satellites and satellite components. Um, but I'm not standing here as such. I'm standing here as the delegate of the Netherlands um, involved in the work within ITU for the agenda item on nano and pico satellites. And I'm the drafting group chairman within working party 7B of ITU um, on this agenda item. And I'll explain to you more what uh, working party 7B uh, is all about. Um, secondly, to make a link to the previous presentation, um, I think I can be honest that one of the reasons I'm standing here is also because I'm a radio amateur, so I can relate um, deeply to the previous uh, speaker as well. 
Um, and so, yeah, I think it's very nice to see a good combination between the amateur radio community and the professional community as well, especially here within this, within this audience. Um, so, I will give you a brief introduction of the studies which are ongoing at the moment within ITU, which are actually, we're, we're very close to WRC 15, only eight months away, as was mentioned. Um, I will provide an introduction to Working Party 7B. What is it? How is the work done there? But more specifically, how did this all come about? And I think I can say, what is the reason why we're also all here? I think the work that we're doing sort of led up to, uh, to this as well. I think that's really good to, good to see. Um, then after that, um, my colleague, Mr. Martin Buscher from the uh, University of Berlin will take over and he will present you the excellent work that he's been doing in the studies within Working Party 7B. Um, on the analysis of the, especially of the characteristics, but also the difficulties that many of the small satellite developers um, um, face. So, we have this agenda item nine. Um, agenda item nine, issue 918. And that is the result of a proposal at WRC 12, at the last World Radio Conference. Um, a couple of um, members of the European Regional Telecommunication Organization, the CEPT, uh, they proposed a preliminary agenda item um, for the WC18 agenda to study the issue of nanosatellites and TICO satellites. And they were aware of the amount of these satellites under development and the big interest there is from many countries all around the world. And they were um, urging to address this issue within ITU as well. So the agenda item reads, to consider the appropriate regulatory procedures um, for the notification of satellite uh, networks and to consider them in light of deployment and operation of these, of these satellites. Um, and then related to that, there is a resolution which invites ITUR, essentially it tasks ITUR to do work and to do studies on this. Um, and instructs the director of the Radio Communication Bureau to report to the next World Radio Conference on the results of these studies. So as you can see, it's an agenda item. Actually, it's an agenda item on both conferences. It's a WRC 18 agenda item, but already work will be done before WRC 15. So, and as such, what happens then procedurally is that the results of, the, of this work, they go into what's called the report of the director um, as an issue under this agenda item nine. Now, this is the resolution, and you see that it talks specifically about the procedures for notifying space networks. And I think we had um, some very interesting presentations also from the IT Radio Communication Bureau um, about what these procedures are, what are the applicable procedures. Now, the most important ones are radio regulations, articles nine and 11, which deal with the advanced publication the coordination and also the final notification and inclusion in the MIFR, in the Master International Frequency Register. Um, but in order to be able to do that, you also need to describe the satellite, so you need technical characteristics. And those characteristics are captured in Appendix 4 of the, of the radio regulations. So these are the applicable regulatory procedures that the resolution calls to review and to look at, and to look at their applicability um, to small and nano and pico satellites. Now, additionally, already a study question had been approved within, uh, within ITUR, um, which is looking specifically at the characteristics of these satellites, because what are these satellites? I mean, I think we all know, we all agree, they're small satellites, um, typically characterized by low mass, low dimensions, but what are they in terms of the radio regulations? And what are they in terms of their use of the spectrum, which is primarily what we in the spectrum management community care about? And secondly, taking into account those characteristics, what are the spectrum requirements for these systems? In other words, in which spectrum can they operate? And then thirdly, of course, that's always related to a certain applicable radio communication service. So which of these services um, are applicable and under which services can these satellites operate. Now, in ITU, there is, in the radio communication sector, there's a number of study groups, and in this case, for this question, it was assigned to study group seven, which deals with, um, with science issues. Now, as I said, um, and as was indicated before in, in previous presentations, the ITU 
consists of several sectors. We are dealing with the radio communication sector. Um, there's study group seven, and within the study group, there's